48, life for the Maidu Indians would change forever. Their land would change, their lifestyle would change, and their spirit would be nearly wiped out from the area that they called home. Nevada, meaning snow-capped, was a beautiful area with many trees, pristine streams, rivers, and plentiful wildlife. The Maidu Indians lived here in peace for centuries. The Maidu did not have a written language, but oral history passed down through the ages. Chief Don Ryberg says, Before contact, it was uh, lots of Indians, lots of happy times, ceremonies, Lots of food. Nice. The Maidu hunted and fished and collected berries and acorns for food. They loved to sing and have ceremonial dances, a way in which they gave thanks to their creator. Most women wove baskets. Each basket had a special meaning revealed in a dream about their design. When gold was discovered at Sutter's Mill in 1848, hundreds of people from all over the country headed west in search for gold. Josie and Betsy were the first Indian women to see a wagon train coming over Banner Mountain. Chief Ryberg says they were immediately afraid. Logging began in the town to build houses for all the miners. Although this devastated the land, mining took priority. Miners continued to follow the creek upstream to find the source of the gold. How long have you been mining? I've been mining 58 years. The, the original miners for this country the 49ers just came from all over the world. They just flocked here. As soon as they heard there was gold here, they came from South America, from the Hawaiian Islands, from all over. And everybody flocked here. People who knew nothing about mining, but they thought they could just pick up gold all over the ground. Miners began digging up the land in Deer Creek. They dug up the earth with picks, shovels, and pans. The area became known as Deer Creek Dry Diggins. You must have seen the many changes in mining techniques. What are some of the earlier methods of mining? The earliest methods started in about 1849 was just panning for gold in the creeks. This is called placer mining. A rocker box was used to recover the gold. The miners would take the sand and gravel from the, from the creek and dump it on top of the rocker box. And then the fine material, uh, they would shake in that rocker box and it let it come out onto a, a little sluice box. And the sluice box would then catch the gold in the ripples. So it was just a tool to help the miners collect gold a little faster than just with a pan. A man named Caldwell opened a store in Deer Creek Dry Diggins, selling picks, shovels, pans, and boots to the miners. The area changed its name to Caldwell's Upper Store. But in 1850, the residents got together and changed the name again to Nevada. But by 1851, most of the creeks were cleaned out of the gold. So then the miners decided they were going to wash the hills down, and they started hydraulic mining. 
Well, the big problem with hydraulic mining is they needed lots and lots of water. Actually, in the hydraulic pit itself, there were only six or seven fellas working. There would be about 400 people working up in the hills, bringing water down from the mountains. Uh, through flumes and ditches and tunnels, uh, any way they could get water t to the hydraulic pits to feed that monitor. So the pressure they got was from the height of the mountain down to the monitor. That gave them all the pressure they needed. They, mo they washed down so much material, they were flooding out Sacramento, Marysville, and Yuba City with debris. The Malakoff was a huge, huge hydraulic mine. It started back in the 1870s and continued on until 1884 when the uh, Sawyer decision was rendered, which said that all hydraulic mining shall cease unless it can be shown that the mines down or the farmlands down below are not damaged. Well, they couldn't very well do that, so it shut down. How are tunnels made in hard rock mining? Well, about 1851, they started to find quartz veins and they finally figured out that's where the gold originally came from. So they started to tunnel into the quartz veins and they used dynamite, but they didn't have dynamite to start with. They just had nitroglycerin, which was very, very dangerous and very unstable. And a lot of guys got killed using nitroglycerin. But as, later on, dynamite developed and uh, it became a little safer. And they, they drilled normally by hand when they started. And uh, as they progressed and time passed, why they started to use machines, uh, pneumatic machines for drilling. The, the ore and the rock, originally they, they used people, and then they went to animals. And the, the favorite animal was the mule. He, he was a, the, everybody loved the mule. They worked and worked and worked, and they were very content to be underground. And uh, later on, as time went by, they uh, invented a, a, a motor with uh, uh, electric batteries, and that's how they hauled or out oh, it's since the 1930s, 20s. How did the miners get into the miles of tunnels? The, the way you get into the, the mines, there were two entrances. You could go in horizontally through an adit, which is just a, a horizontal tunnel from outside inside. Or you could get on a skip that's attached to a, a hoist. And that's called the shaft, and that went from the surface straight down. Did you get your round in yesterday? No, I didn't finish mucking out. I hope you hit it today. That shaft was, oh, better than 12,000 feet deep. And uh, so it took a lot of guys over an hour just to get to their working place from the surface on down. Mrs. Hansen, why did the corn, Cornish leave Cornwall and why did they come to Nevada County? They left Cornwall because the, <clears throat> there were lots of uh, mines in Cornwall, mostly tin mines, and they were uh, shutting down. There wasn't as much uh, employment as there had been, and there were mines, the gold rush in Nevada County, and so they thought they would find employment here. 
What special skills and experiences did they bring? Well, they had worked in the tin mines. A lot of them started when they were eight and nine years old, so they'd really had a lot of experience. And um, they were the same kind of mines here that they had in Cornwall, so it was just natural that they would come here. What influence did the Cornish people have in mining? As the underground mines developed, it took more expertise to get the gold out. And they had so much expertise, and they especially knew how to develop Cornish pumps that could dewater these deep mines here. So if you were from Cornwall, and they knew you were a Cornish guy, you were a cousin Jack, and you could get a job anywhere. That's the first thing they hired. The Cornish miners brought their strong work ethic, their knowledge of vertical mining, and their famous Cornish pasty to Nevada County. So what is a pasty? A, a pasty it was a meat pie, kind of, enclosed in pastry, meat and potatoes, and they had round... Uh, lunch buckets in the first place and the pasty would fit in top of it and then they would lots of times hang their lunch bucket over a candle and it would warm it up and he would heat it up for a little bit then the top of the lunch bucket had a little container and they would have tea in that my class makes good pasty mine too the Indians' livelihood up until this time was dependent on hunting and the careful use of resources found in their surroundings. The Indians were finding it hard to survive, and friction grew between the Indians and the miners. The miners felt the Indians were in their way and claimed the land now known as Nevada City as their own. For the miners, the only solution to the problem was to get rid of the Indians. Tell us about the Indian Removal Act. <clears throat> the Indian Removal Act, uh, the Maidus say it was, they had two trail of tears. What they did was um, they, um, the miners and settlers took their land over, was enforced in uh, 1854, was the first force march, forced them to move off their land uh, to Round Valley. So they would, uh, what they call uh, sweeps, they would take big areas and, and gather all the Indians up and put them in pans and force them to march from Crest Valley uh, to Round Valley. And a lot of the people didn't make it. Young children didn't make it, and the old people didn't make it. Most of the people that, that made it were healthy, late teenagers, 20 years old. What was the extermination policy? The extermination policy was a policy that the federal government enacted in the middle 1800s. It was to exterminate all Indians, and money was appropriated to do this through uh, the state of California, and I believe there's, there was like $2 million uh, appropriated to do this extermination of the Indians. There were groups of people that went out and got scalps. They got paid by how many scalps they took. And uh, price, uh, 25 cents a scalp. What kind of treaties were made with the Indians? <clears throat> they, they entered into over 500 treaties and uh, they broke all, every one of them. What is happening with the Maidu tribes today? Well, uh, my tribe today is uh, trying to get federal recognition. And in the meantime, we're trying to preserve 
what culture we have left. In the mid-1800s, thousands of Chinese fled China to America, the land of opportunity. They were trying to escape famine and the Taiping Rebellion. The Chinese men came first in crowded ships with very little food but with high hopes for a better life. They had heard that there was a need for many men to build a great railroad across the west. Others came in search for gold. This is Mr. and Mrs. Yen and um, their family has been here since the mid-1800s. How many generations does your family go back in Nevada County? Oh, my, my great-grandfather came here in the um, 1850s from China. And then he sent for, for his, his son, my grandfather. And um, so we've been here since the middle of the 1800s. What was the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1880? Oh, that was to um, uh, prevent Chinese from uh, buying more land and, um, and, and uh, restricting the number of Chinese who could come over from China. Many of the Caucasian people felt that the Chinese were, were taking all the jobs. boycott the Chinese business? Well, because they, they, um, they felt they were t taking jobs away. Oh! 